In the first episode of Squid Game, you get introduced to Song. He's a father of one who doesn't live with his child. He lives at home with his mother. And I hate to say it, but the guy's a loser. He's had a bunch of failed businesses. He's in debt up to his eyeballs to loan sharks. And he has a massive gambling addiction. So much so that his mother will actually hide her debit card so he can't end up taking out funds from her bank account and using it at the horse track. Although, Sung is able to do that anyway. It's the day of his daughter's birthday, and he really needs a gift for her. So he decides not just to take the money and buy one. No, no, no. He's going to go to the racetrack, bet it, and hope that he wins big to buy her something that she really, really wants. Now, at first, it's rough, but then all of a sudden, he does end up hitting big. He ends up winning a whole bunch of money, and he is on cloud nine. The problem is, his debtors end up coming for him. When Song exits the off-track betting facility, he is calling his daughter. He's saying, we're going to meet for dinner. You can get whatever you want. But then when he sees his creditors, he takes off running, trying to avoid them. He's so out of sorts, he ends up knocking into a girl and losing that money. So when his creditors eventually do end up catching up to him, he's got nothing to show for it, which comes as a big surprise. And they're out for blood. I mean, they're threatening to do real bodily harm to Song if he doesn't pay up. While he's holding back tears, begging for his life, telling these people that he will pay them back, he ends up getting a bit of a break. The one loan shark says, okay, I'm going to give you till next month to pay me back, but if you don't, you're going to owe me your organs. And he makes Song sign a contract. Song, though, is so pathetic that he actually asked the loan sharks, as they're leaving, to borrow more money because he lost everything when he knocked into that girl. The loan sharks don't give it to him, so he has to go back to the off-track bettings window and ask the girl for the tip that he gave her when he won big. He ends up using that money to go to a claw machine and winning a prize that he can give his daughter. And even though his daughter is pretty young, she's probably six or seven, you can tell just by her face that even she knows her dad is a loser. Especially when she opens up the present and it's a gun. Now, that was something that Song did not expect to pull out of a claw machine. And in fairness, when he did pull the prize out, it wasn't a box, but it's something that's pretty tough to recover from. And Song tries to. He tries to make up a reason on why he got his daughter a gun until she pulls the trigger and turns out the gun is actually a lighter. All she really wants, though, is for her dad to stop smoking. So he pinky promises her that her present next year will be just that, that he will finally quit smoking cigarettes. Dad of the year. He goes and drops off his daughter, who's sleeping at this point, to her mom's place. Her mom has that look of, damn, why did I ever have sex with this dude? Which is a look that every woman I've ever been with has as well. But it's just, Song isn't a guy that you have a lot of faith in. He's someone that even when he does get an opportunity, he seems to screw it up. And a prime example of that is what comes next. As he's waiting to take the train home from his daughter's place... A man approaches him, very well dressed in a suit, and gives him an offer that's way too good to pass up. He wants to play a game called Dotchki. Each player has one paper square. Player A puts his square on the ground, and player B takes his square and throws it as hard as he can at player A's square to try to flip it. If he flips it, he wins. The man in the suit offers Song $100,000 if he can win, and Song quickly takes him up on it. But Song loses. And Song can't exactly pay $100,000. So the man says, okay, well, I'll slap you. Every time you lose, I'll just slap you instead of taking your money. And they play for a while. Song's face is beat up. But finally, finally Song wins. And he gets the $100,000 and he is thrilled. As Song is counting the money, the guy says to him, you know, there are ways of making big money like this just for playing games for a few days. But Song tells him he's not interested because the deal seems way too fishy, way too good to be true. And that's when the guy stands up and basically reveals all of Song's information. He shows Song that he knows his last name. He knows that earlier that day he signed away his physical rights to a loan shark. He knows how old he is. He knows where he went to school. He knows that he was laid off and had a bunch of failed businesses. He knows that he's divorced. He also knows about his little girl. And at this point, Song's a little freaked out. He demands to know who the guy is, but the guy doesn't answer. He just pulls out a little card from his pocket 
which looks like it was designed by the PlayStation company because it has an X, a square, and a circle. But on the card is a phone number. And the guy gives it to Song and says, we don't have many spots left. He then gets on the next train and leaves. And Song takes the card and takes the money and goes to grab dinner. He goes to a local woman that he knows very well. He grew up with her son, and her son has done really well for himself. Her son's name is Song Wu, and he went to a really successful business school. He's a successful businessman. He is the pride of his mother's eye, unlike Song. And you get the sense that Song knows it, and because of that, he's a bit jealous. He grabs the food, heads home to have dinner with his mom, and he's excited because he's going to give his mom all the money that he won in that game of Dachki. But she's not excited because she's really concerned about how he got all that money in the first place. His mother, though, changes the topic, asks how dinner went with his daughter, and asks, did anything come up? And Song says, no. What would come up? And that's when his mother says, well, your daughter, her mother, and her mother's boyfriend are all moving to the States next year. Song's reaction is kind of weak, and his mother gets really pissed off at him. Because she wants her son to fight for custody of his daughter. But Song doesn't feel like he's financially able to do that. His mother, though, has already looked into the matter. She tells him all he needs to do is prove that he can financially take care of his child, and he can get her back, keep her in the country. Way easier said than done, though, for Song. That night, he starts looking at photos of his daughter and him together, and then he remembers that guy gave him the card. That guy talked about winning big money for just playing games, so he gives the number a call. The person on the other end gives him an address to go to, and Song gets picked up by a bunch of guys who look like they're wearing fencing cages. You can't see what they look like. And when Song gets in the car, he's immediately gassed. When he eventually wakes up, He's with 455 other people, very confused on where he is. They're all wearing the same thing, a green jumpsuit. The only difference is they all have different numbers on them. And what these people can't see is everything is being monitored by the workers who are all wearing red jumpsuits with that fencing mask that you can't see. And all of it seems to be run by this guy with a black mask who calls himself the front man. To the contestants, though, they're just confused. Song himself ends up bonding with the first guy, number one, who's an older man who's dealing with a brain tumor. A commotion, though, breaks out between two contestants, a guy and a girl. And the guy is beating the crap out of the girl because the girl is a thief. It just so happens, by the way, the girl is the same girl that Song knocked into when he lost his money. The girl, who's number 67, and the guy, who's number 101, just have a bad past. And Song, even though he was robbed from, feels like he needs to interject before things get really out of hand. Everybody, though, stops when nine workers come out and address the crowd. They start off by welcoming the group and explain that if you win all six games, you're going to receive a handsome cash prize. Most of the crowd, though, is really reluctant to believe these people because they all were gassed, they had their stuff taken, and now they're being addressed by people who won't even show their face. One guy speaks up big time saying how what these people did wasn't right, and that person just so happens to be Song Wu, the successful businessman. He wants to know why everybody should stay, and that's when the workers tell everybody who Song Wu really is. He's in debt up to his eyeballs. He's being chased after the police. Yeah, he might be a businessman, but he's a failed businessman. He's $1.2 billion in debt. And he's not the only one. Everybody in the room owes a lot of money to people they don't want to owe money to. They all need a way out. These games are it. Now, nobody's forcing anybody to play these games. But when you volunteer to participate, you're in the game for good. He gives the group a chance to speak up if they don't want to participate in the game, but nobody does because everybody needs the money. And then he makes them all line up and sign a contract. The contract has three clauses. The first one is a player is not allowed to voluntarily quit the game. The second clause is a player who refuses to play will be eliminated. And the third clause is the games may be terminated upon a majority vote. And everybody lines up to sign their rights away. They're then ushered through what looks like a dollhouse to get their picture taken. And their pictures 
are unknowingly to them being put on a board. After that, they're shuffled out to the game arena. And that's when the front man kicks back, pours himself a cocktail, and watches what's about to take place. Now, all of the contestants are pretty confused, and it's explained to them that they're just going to play a simple game of red light, green light. It's the old children's game. When it's green light, you move ahead. When it's red light, you have to stop in place. If you move, you're out of the game. There's a slight difference, though. In this game, you have five minutes to get across the line. Oh, and the big difference is, in this game, if you move and it's red light, you end up dying. And when the contestants realize that, it does not go well. A lot of them are killed off. The ones that survive are really just frozen in place. But one by one, they realize that the only way to survive is to get across that line. So whether they like it or not, even though they're all terrified, they have to do it. Song is barely able to get over the line. In fact, at one point, it's red light, and he's about to fall forward, but he's saved by a guy who grabs the back of his collar, holding him up. But in the end, Song, along with a bunch of others, do end up crossing the line and surviving to the next game. And when the game ends, the roof closes up, because they're no longer in the city, they're on a remote island. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry. It'll be up in a day or two.